I shot some scenes inspired by Stranger Things, and today we're talking about the lenses I used to shoot them. All right, people, let's get into it. I am Garrett, and today we are talking about the lenses that we used to film these uh, three Stranger Things scenes. If you're interested in the lighting and the production setup of how we went and shot those, uh, there's a link up over there to a live stream we did with light panels on that. Today, though, we are only talking about the lenses. We're gonna talk about the pros, we're gonna talk about the cons, we're gonna talk about the workflow, we're gonna talk about the things that I like, dislike, and who these lenses are for. As always, there are chapter markers below as well as in the description. So if you need to skip ahead to something that's more relevant to you, feel free or to rewind to revisit something that you may be interested in. The lenses we used to film these stranger scenes, as I call them, are the Siri Night Walker lenses. All of the scenes were shot with these lenses and these lenses only, and each scene utilized all three of them. And because the scenes are so very different in terms of lighting and application, we got a really good sense for how these lenses function in a variety of shooting settings. These are super 35 millimeter lenses, meaning that they are not full frame lenses. They will not cover full frame sensors. They will cover any APS-C, APS-H, super 35, all the way to micro four thirds. When you buy this kit, if you were to buy all three of them, it comes with this case and the three lenses and comes in at just right around a thousand uh, USD, meaning that these are a very budget forward cinema lens set. So throughout the course of this review, keep in mind, these are budget lenses. They come in three focal lengths, 24, 35, and 55, all boasting that T1-2 aperture. They come in a host of mounts as well as in two colors. I have them in black. They also come in a gunmetal gray color. They come in X, RF, micro four thirds, and E mounts. So any of your budget systems or entry level camera systems will accept one of those mounts. Something to keep in mind with these lenses, and it's true of all cropped frame lenses, is that the uh, focal length here, right? The 24, 35, and 55 is based on a full 35 millimeter sensor size, meaning that these are going to be cropped in from those numerics. Uh, right here, you'll be able to see what the full frame equivalent would be. So it's not as wide as a 24 and it is a little tighter than a 55, but a good range all the same. Couple things to note off the bat. One, they are all the same size, both in terms of our gear position and placement and in our lens frontage, meaning that we can swap and change lenses quite efficiently and effectively without having to worry about re-rigging our camera to accommodate different lengths or sizes of lenses. They're all also approximately about the same weight, coming in at about 500 grams. Uh, so they are lightweight, compact, and again, uniform, making filming with them and interchanging those lenses a, a breeze. They are made entirely out of metal, which is wonderful because it means that the build quality is going to be something that's going to last a little bit longer uh, than something that you would find um, on like a more plastic heavy lens. And you can see here, if I open this up, take the front and the back off here, you, I have wide open at T1.2. And then of course I can close that down all the way to T16. These all have the Mod 08 teeth on them. So any follow focus or fizz system that you are using will work with these very, very light tension, right? Like you don't have to put a lot behind them, meaning if you're working with lower torque systems, uh, like the original Tilta uh, Nucleus Nano, uh, won't have a problem with these lenses. Now that we have gone over the specifics of these builds, let's talk about what I like. These lenses honestly are quite easy to shoot with because they are so small and compact, uh, they are a breeze to put on a camera without adding a lot of extra bulk or weight. In addition to that, uh, they are being uniform amongst the lenses. It makes lens changes quite 
easy. The build quality is something that I feel would hold up. I didn't drop them. I don't plan on doing a drop test on them, but just in case I ever did, I do feel like these would hold up uh, against a fall. Generally, I found the image of these lenses to be quite pleasing. They didn't draw too much attention to themselves, meaning that they weren't so over charactered that they had a very specific look, something like what you'd find in like a Helios uh, 44-2. As nice as those lenses are, the look is so specific that it isn't always the best option uh, when we're talking about something having versatility amongst projects. So I liked that these did have some character, uh, but they didn't have so much character that it was a problem, if that makes sense. The minimum focal distance on here is somewhere between 30 and 60 centimeters, uh, depending on the lens that you're talking about within the set. But the focal distance was good enough that I could get in to the shots that I wanted to without feeling limited by my minimum focal distance. Some lenses, especially when we're talking about the budget lenses, the minimum focal distances are so far that it's really hard to, to manage your shots. I felt very free in my ability to kind of move through these lenses and get the frame that I wanted. These have very controlled flaring. I didn't find it to be distracting and I could shoot into light sources without it getting too overwhelming or overpowering for my image. All of that praise to say these are budget lenses, which means that there are drawbacks. We don't get to have everything that we want. And especially at this price point, uh, there are some things that are great and some things to consider if you were thinking about buying lenses uh, in this price point. The first thing to note is that these are true T1.2 lenses. That said, there's, there's kind of a big caveat to that in that while these lenses are T1.2, at T1.2, they do go soft. And I don't mean like out of focus, I just mean that the entire image does go just soft and a little more soft than I would like uh, in that. And again, totally understandable and totally normal for a lens in this price point. But just know that T12 is gonna give you a ton of light and you're going to be able to shoot in very dark scenarios. Uh, but two things to note, one, your depth of field is going to be insanely shallow because you're at one two. And the other is, is that your whole image is going to go a little soft. For me, I felt really comfortable living at T2 to T2.8. That got me to a sharpness level that I was more comfortable with. But if I was ever in a pinch or a bind, I do have that extra latitude to pull. I just wouldn't lean on that as being the primary aperture that I would use for this lens. The two biggest points to keep in mind when we're talking about the behavior of these lenses. The first is chromatic aberration. Again, at a lens of this price point, the chromatic aberration is something that is expected. And chromatic aberration, for those of you who are unfamiliar with it, is when we're looking at the fine edges or the fine details of an image, they will either skew magenta or they will skew green. Sometimes they skew different colors, but primarily it's one of those two. The other thing to keep in mind when we're talking about these lenses is ghosting. And that is uh, where we're gonna start to see uh, the lens elements themselves reflected in reflections or in the way that light wraps or the highlight bloom that kind of wraps around the image. Uh, we took a couple of shots that were into direct light sources and you can see along the edges that light wrap that happens, that ghosting that kind of happens around the subject, again, is something that is less clinical and more creative on a lens, but something that you should be aware of if these are lenses that you're looking to buy. I like the look. I think that it has almost a vintage-esque quality to it, but it is something that you should know if you're expecting a super hyperclinical lens. As to be expected with your wider focal lengths like the 24, you're gonna see a little bit more of that barrel distortion that you're gonna have. Very normal in super wide lenses, uh, but something to keep in mind. And depending on the sensor size of the camera that you're filming with, you might find that you're getting vignetting in the corners. Again, primarily, you'd only find that in the 24, not with the 35 or 55, uh, but something to keep in mind. All of these things are not inherently negative. These are just behavioral characteristics of the lenses and things that you should know. 
if you like shooting with something that has character and kind of a vintage aesthetic, these fit more into that ballpark than something that would be much more linear or clinical. While the uh, characteristics of a lens, whether it's, it's slightly soft or there's chromatic aberration or ghosting or vignetting or distortion, right? Th those are things that are preferential, right? You can choose wh whether you like those or not. One of the drawbacks that I really dislike, and it's it's very weird, are the, the, the lens caps. The way that these lens caps are designed, they don't sit well within the lens and they take a little bit of work to actually get, there we go, in right. Um, lens caps, I want them to be fast, I want them to be easy, and I think it has something to do with the fact that they're threaded on the ends here. Um, I think that this threading really kind of makes them like have to be set in there we go, very specifically. Um, so that's that's one thing. The other thing is, is that with a 67 millimeter front, a lot of people will already have existing filters that are going to be on a 72, 77, or 82 mil frontage. Um, so I think what I will do with these lenses, I will get a step up ring, which will go from 67 to 82, kind of put it on the front, and then I'd have kind of a standardized front for these and other lenses, which will work better for my matte boxes, my filters, and, and, and that kind of thing. Um, I'm not mad at the compactness of it by any means. Mostly it's the lens uh, cap. I, I, I would like a more standardized front though. Last thing I'll say is that these are not weather sealed lenses, which means that you don't want these to be out in the elements. I shoot with a red Komodo. The red Komodo is also not weather sealed. There's just a giant fan on one side that blows air through the whole thing. So my whole camera system isn't weather sealed. So these aren't that big of a deal for me, but depending on the systems that you are shooting and the cameras that you're working with and the environments that you're in, uh, just know that these are not weather sealed which means moisture can and will get inside these lenses if you do not take the proper precautions. Getting back to Stranger Things, I found these lenses to be extremely easy to use. I found the, the look to be quite appealing, and I found that the characteristics of these lenses work with the style of shoot that we went for, which was this Stranger Things style. I like having the flexibility of these lenses going much, much more wide open than you otherwise would in many of the other lenses. And I think that overall, these lenses for the price punch well above their weight. Which leads us to the question of who these lenses are for. I think these lenses work perfectly for people who are entering into the world of cinema lenses. You wanna have fully manual lenses, you wanna have aperture control on the barrel of the lens, you want something that has build quality that is gonna hold up in a shooting environment, work directly with a follow focus, and give you a little bit more character than something like a kit lens would. These lenses being just over 300 bucks a pop puts them at a really attractive price point in terms of where they fit in the hierarchy of lenses because they can get extremely, extremely expensive. So I think for at the price and for who these lenses are targeted to, these lenses make a whole lot of sense. Just go into this eyes wide open in terms of what you are expecting the lens to do for you and how you plan to use it. Later this month, we're doing a Euphoria inspired shoot. So if you wanna see how we lit and shot that, go ahead, hit that little bell icon down below so you know when I upload that video. And as always, I'll see you in the next one.